How do you get clients for your Power BI consulting business? That's often a big concern and focus for people who are already uh, in the consultant role or they're thinking about becoming Power BI consultant. Now, the usual wisdom is that, oh, you got to figure out who the decision maker is, the person who's going to hire you and pay you, and you target them for your lead generation step. Now, that's not a bad approach, but I want to suggest something different to you, a slightly different approach, where it actually, in some scenarios, it might be beneficial for you to not target the decision maker. By the way, this is, of course, part of our five-step process that we follow inside our Power BI Consultant program. And it starts off by defining a niche, then you create your Pillarstone story, and then the next three steps are really around lead generation, but they mark the milestones, which is to get the first paid client, uh, the next paid client, and then the holy grail, steady stream of clients. But all three rely on lead generation, but lead generation can't act on its own. It needs to be preceded by you figuring out the niche and you figuring out the story, and, and you leverage that to uh, do the lead generation. But what we are talking about in this video is that who do you target? Do you target the decision maker or the non-decision maker, right? So what is a decision maker, by the way? The decision maker is somebody who's usually in a managerial role and controls the budget, really. So has, controls the purse strings. So they are the ones who usually can authorize a spend. So like, yep, we're going to hire this person, spend um, X thousand dollars on this engagement and so forth, right? So they're the one who control the purse strings. They're the ones who say yay or nay. So a lot of lead generation does evolve around if you're talking to somebody and they're like, oh, he's not the decision maker. You want to figure out who the decision maker is and talk to them, right? So you'll say, oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, Joe is just uh, an analyst in there. And yeah, hey, Joe, who's your manager, right? And you, and you try to <laughs> find out who the manager is and then try to buddy up with the manager and convince them. But there can be a different approach. And the different approach, and I've, I've seen it work, and it can be very effective, and you're going to have to judge when it fits best. The, the, the way to approach that is you work with Joe. You work with, let's say, the analyst. And hey, I worked a lot with finance folks. I'm going to use that as an example. Let's say Joe is a lowly financial analyst, and yes, he, he's not a manager. He doesn't control the budget or the purse strings. He can't authorize spending $100 working with you, right? Let alone thousands of dollars. So he's not a decision maker, but he's the one who feels the most pain when there is dysfunction around BI, or especially specifically the self-service BI piece. So most organizations have some kind of BI, is just not functional, right? I mean, at least for the troops on the front line, the troops in the trenches, and that's what Joe is. So Joe can become your best buddy because, you know, he has a pain, a problem, and you have the solution. And when I've had conversations with Joe or Jane or some people like in, in, in that role, Frankly, I've always loved that. For, for me, I came from the trenches. I was a business who was on the front lines and just, oh, you know, get so frustrated that IT wasn't delivering and I couldn't wait for them. And then I had to cobble everything together myself. And it was so painful. So I've lived that and maybe you have too. And that's why I always say that, ironically, business users make better Power BI consultants than techies ever do or ever will. So if you're from that background as well, you might be able to really connect with Joe or Jane, the person in the trench, and, and listen to them. And again, be genuine about it. You're here to try to help people. I hope you never forget that. I hope I never forget that, right? So you talk to them, you listen to the problems, and then, yeah, discuss the solution. Show them, see if you can do a mini proof of concept, or show them examples, show them something that you've done for other clients, and here's the clincher, because once you, you get Joe or Jane on board, they're not the decision maker, but then they, they will go to bat for you. They will advocate for you. And it's a magical thing when it works. Because, so folks, in this day and age, I think the best way to sell is not to sell. And this is, so one way I do that is by leveraging my story. So I'm not making a sales pitch, I'm just telling a story. 
and that's our second step in a process of course but this can be a great way too where I would walk into a meeting where Joe would actually introduce me finally to the manager but I would be sitting in the meeting and I would barely say anything and Joe would be constantly talking about that oh you know Avi this and Avi that and Power BI this and Power BI that and the decision maker goes okay Joe sounds great right and if you think about it a lot of these folks they've been around in the organization for a long time and and their managers well there is a trust factor I mean of course you're gonna be walking in as a stranger they don't know you so well I mean, maybe do a little bit if you are socially active or something but but still you still gotta make your case but if Joe is making the case for you it's called um, um, the transference of, uh, yeah, so I, forget it, I forget the term, but, but yeah, they trust Joe and Joe trusts you, a transference of trust, that's what it is, right? So, so you get that automatically and it's a thing of beauty. So again, it may not work all the time and yes, you do often want to figure out who the decision maker is and you may want to talk to them, but sometimes getting friendly with Joe or Jane, the the non-decision maker, the troop in the trench, the business user who's fighting this war and failing, uh, the person who are actually who you are actually there to help, their life is what you're gonna impact the most. Becoming friends with them isn't a bad idea to win business and win clients. All right, my friends, I will catch you in the next video. Until then, power on. <music>